an ongoing project um, that has been discussed with my program director at North Alabama Medical Center. So why I came with this idea, I'm going to discuss it today. Um, so the main thing about my project, teamwork, is that I'm focusing on mental health on residents that come from uh, diverse backgrounds, especially IMGs, and how these uh, theater games, these improvisational theater games may allow us to uh, acquire leadership skills, to better communicate with our peers, and to improve. So first, let's start by talking what is uh, improvisational theater. So it's an artistic performance um, that is based on storytelling. It's I create a story, someone else creates a story, and we start building a story, we start building some communications. And from there, everyone that is involved will start learning skills to promote acceptance because I'm accepting the story I'm, I'm being told and they are accepting the story I'm telling. It's going to promote teamwork. It's also going to promote communications. So initially as a theater, as for the theater base, it was soon realized that this could be applied for many other backgrounds, uh, especially for people in the healthcare work environment because it would allow them to have tools to kind of change their mindsets, to start having some personal development, teamwork, better communication with patients, better communication with colleagues, and as well come with innovative and creative ideas, and also start talking with meaning. With meaning. So how can it actually help our mental health and wellness? So once we, this is not a new idea in the sense that it has been applied in other um, in other studies. So when I when I first came with this idea was because my program was increasing from twelve residents in internal medicine per year to nineteen residents in internal medicine. So I realized that most of us, at least ninety percent, I would say, were IMGs. So throughout my year, I would say I had a very good communication with most of my peers, and I came to realize that uh, sometimes we need a better way to get introduced to the program, our teachers, our faculty always taught us like try to communicate better. But sometimes um, as much as we would we would know in our own languages or in, our, or in our own countries, sometimes we don't have the right words or sometimes we feel like in this new environment, we, we might not get accepted. So certainly transitioning to this new healthcare system is challenging and wellness becomes a vital element. So now with 19 residents per year, with the first year and now with my second year, we also had five, well, so at six more residents, so we're also 19. Wellness becomes a vital element and that's something that I was initially involved in the wellness community. And I shared these ideas with the program and they certainly said, go ahead and try to address it. So we are working on this since this has never been applied for residents that have transitioned to this system, like IMG residents. It has been applied for improving communications in pediatric residents in, at the ER, but we have never put an emphasis in this wellness, in this mental health opportunity to try to promote teamwork and leadership. So how are we going to do this is by clear objective gains, two, three minutes each game that will make us reflect and see how can we be better persons? How can we have better soft skills? And how can we realize that as me, as my peers, we're in the same environment and we are working towards our goal that it's becoming professionals, but at the same time provide optimal care. And in that sense, um, this project presents us a valuable opportunity because it will improve our support group system between the residents by doing these improv games that aim to first stress relief. So it's a wellness directed activity. We need some stress relief outside environment with some steam building sometimes, um, whenever we face some challenging patients, we don't understand them very well at the beginning of our training. And we need that self, self esteem building, realizing that we're not alone. So that will at the same time make some group bonding. We are going to try to promote effective intra and interprofessional communi communications in between professionals. Sometimes we struggle with communicating with nurses, with new personal healthcare workers, or sometimes they might not truly understand what they what we're trying to say or how we express with our faces, how we look at them, how they look at us. So it's very important. And also 
One thing that I find very relevant by doing these activities that I'm going to describe specifically some of them in the next minutes, it's try to explain very um, challenging diseases like sarcoidosis, a severe heart failure with simple terms. We know the good terms, we know how to present these patients during rounds, we know how to discuss with our attendees, we know how to talk about cases during presentation, but sometimes we lack these simple words or this creativity that will, will come with these games to try to address very complex themes in very simple words. And at the same time, this will promote empathy, which I find this is very vital during our training, active listening, not only to our patients, but also to our peers, to our faculty. And again, I, in, I encourage the teamwork and as well as a willingness to appreciate our views or other points of view. Sometimes we think I might be right. I don't know if this guy that uh, has other backgrounds is also right. I don't care about what he says. No, that is not what we want. We want to hear them, to learn from them. And that's the way we're building our professional lives. And in that sense, we want to make a pro uh, mentality of problem solving and a stimulation of a critical thinking in a creative way. So how we're going to do that, um, the idea is that we're going to separate some groups of residents because we're around 50 residents in total. We cannot do the 50 residents in one session. So we're probably going to do it in three separate uh, dates that we're going to group to put them in some groups and start with uh, a two, three hours activity. It's going to be in the park. We're going to have some refreshments for that. Uh, we're just waiting for the sun to be a little uh, less sunny, a nice weather, a nicer weather. And we're going to start with some what I call icebreakers. Icebreakers are meant to uh, relax our bodies, to try to change that mentality. Okay, I'm I'm here with people from my work environment. How can I change my mentality by doing icebreaker? Like go hondo jump there. It's we put in a circle, we look at each other, and we start going. We start uh, moving a flow, what I call. So we do flow, we do go, and then the person to the right, we also go to the right, to the right, to the right, and make a circle. Until one, we add Hondo. Hondo is going to be like this, and they are going to change the direction of the circle. Then it's going to be jump, that is going to go to the next person, but not me. And in that way, we'll start making people be more alert. So now that they are engaged, for example, we're going to, make from one to 10. What does that mean? That's very interesting because we're gonna have like, let's say 15 people in one of these first meetings and they will start, they have to say numbers from one to 20 without stepping on each other. That means that one we sell one, then another we say two, three progressively. But if they step in, like two people at the same time say three, they will have to restart the game. And the thing is about that game, for example, is that we, it would come with time, but people will realize that if they start looking at each other, they will eventually make the 20. And when they make the 20, everybody will clap, will laugh, because they realize that this is a teamwork that they have made and they have succeeded in making that count of 20. So just to mention, all these games are not just, uh, I invented the games, these games are background based on improvisational theater games in American books, books from S Spain. I, I did some practice in improv before my training, actually it was right before COVID, so actually COVID kind of uh, missed some opportunities after that. But these games are very goal intended. And now after those icebreakers, we'll go to improv games. I'm just going to mention a few of them. One I like, it's a rotation complement. So we'll put, people face each other and for some seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, they will compliment each other. They will say, hey, I like your shirt. I like your haircut. Doesn't that make you feel better? Doesn't that make you build your self-esteem? It does. It does. And you realize that it's our our work, our co-workers, our peers that are telling those compliments to us and they are boosting our morale. The other game I like is paper, rock, scissors. It, that, it sounds very general, but let me walk you through it. We're going to make in these 15 people, 18 people, let's say, we're going to make them compete against each other with rock, paper, scissors. And the one who wins will pass to the next round. So after 
nine will have like after nine couples we have like four or five they will compete against each other until they have one winner but every time you lose you're going to be cheering to the person you lose against so that will promote that hey i'm just playing rocks paper and scissors and i'm just lost and instead of oh man i lost i will sit i'm cheering to the person that won i'm cheering to the person to succeed i want them to succeed so that's those are the lessons, those are the reflections that after each tiny game will make. And it may sound that this is a short activity, but it, it may have a huge impact. And how we're going to measure that impact, we're going to do some scales. I have tried to address many of the studies I read about these improv games in the setting of ER, pediatrics. There is no... Uh, clear-cut way of measuring wellness or, or measuring how this impacts. And in general, wellness activities kind of lack on that. They are We're not truly able to measure wellness. We just use scales that may provide us some idea of mental well-being and um, measuring some communication competence if my communication skills improve. But there is truly no perfect way to measure this wellness activity. So my first aim at this project is to see how much can we engage these residents. And I think we can. I think we have a good group and we're going to do a nice, a nice first project and maybe go from there and to the upcoming batch, maybe do kind of case control. Some people will receive this uh, activity, some of them not. We're still figuring that out or even with the main group of 50 people maybe some of them will receive the activity or some of them not. So as this is an ongoing work project, um, we are at the point that we have to we have to see how much will this truly impact. That's my only concern about the project, but otherwise as an activity, as the goals are stated, I think it's very promising. As I said, it has been done before, hasn't been exploring IMG residents. Mental health is a, uh, is truly an important issue after the pandemics and after seeing each other with masks, now we're seeing each other by our faces completely out of mask. So I, I think that this will make us feel validated, will make us feel confident, will make us feel um, thankful for having this opportunity in training here in the US and we'll have to go from there in this ongoing project. Thank you. Thank you.